Hello, it's Plus Report, where we bring you uh, some of the stories and events that made the news recently. And in case you missed out on some of them, do not worry, we've got you covered in this edition. Welcome. I'm Jacinta Obiuku. Ahead of 2023 January election, Lagos State Governor Babajide Songwolu has declared that the person who will succeed President Muhammad Buhari should be able to continue from where he will stop next year and put in the work required to make Nigeria a truly unstoppable force among nations. Songwolu stated this during the inauguration of Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu um, Abad movement, another group aside Swaga. Someone who also enjoyed everyone to get their PVCs and vote right in the coming election. It's not a campaign, neither is it a carnival. Rather, it is the inauguration of the Working Committee for the actualization of the presidential ambition of the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The movement is set up to mobilize support across the country for Tinubu ahead of the 2023 general elections. Mandate we shall stand on your mandate, on your mandate. On your mandate, we shall stand. Speaker after speaker bring to the fore the qualities they believe Chinubu possess for the job. The real work is to get Ashiwaju Bola Men Tinubu first as the flag bearer of our party. And then to get him installed as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We all know for sure that when it came on board, Lagos State was generating like 600 million per annum. And he brought in his expertise. And with that, right now, we are generating over 30 billion naira every month. In his keynote address, tagged choosing rightly to serve Nigeria, the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu expresses worry over the myriad of challenges bedeviling the nation, but holds strongly that the man Nigeria needs to take over from President Muhammad Buhari must be one capable of changing the narratives. That person is the true person that we believe can help us ensure the legacy that our current president will be leaving behind. We'll take it to a level that will be new light and new heights that we've never seen before. That person is Ashura Jubala and Neytinimbu. He charges members of the ABAT committee to go out and encourage the people to obtain their voters card to be able to exercise their franchise. Let us go out there and encourage our people first to ensure that they have the ability to vote to cast their vote. Let's go out and ensure that they have a voter's card so that they can be part of the next journey when we're conducting the election next year. Sawon Lu maintains that the choice of who becomes Nigeria's next president is critical and mustn't be left to speculation or permutation. From Lagos, Lav Ikuku Uyedoku, reporting for Plus TV, Africa. Well, the message will continue to be for everyone to get registered for their PVCs, make effort to collect the PVCs, and endeavor to exercise your civic responsibility. Ikeja Bomb Blast will remain one of the darkest days in the history of Lagos. The tragic event shook Nigeria's economic capital and set many people, especially the young, to their early graves. 20 years after, Lagosians remember this incident as some survivors called the government for support. Plus TV Africa, Gozeka Ohai Jesse has more 
in this report. It's 20 years ever since the bomb blast at the Keja Cantonment occurred in Lagos, which took the life of thousands of people, thousands of children being separated from their families, and a lot of people rendered homeless in Lagos. Over there is the burial ground where a lot of people that were victim of that incident were buried. These are few names out of the many that died at the incident. In the past, a memorial holds here yearly, but that's not to be now. Alaji Male comes here every year to honor his 10-year-old son, who was a victim of the bomb blast. What happened for that time? The bomb blast happened to Ikeja Cantonment. As it happened there, our children and our father, our mother, they run from Ikeja, reached Mafluku, from Mafluku to Airport Road, from Airport Road to Kana. Omale does not seem to have fully recovered from the trauma of losing his son. My Peking died, he entered the canal. So as he entered the canal, nothing I can do. By that time, I no get a job. So they bury him too here. And since then, the bear governor of uh, Lagos State, make he help us settle this matter for us. Some of our, our neighbor, they get stroke. Some of them die. As I talk to you now, my wife is late. Now, I beg government to help us, Lagos State government to help us. 20 years is a long time for people to forget some incidents. However, on the streets, some recount their experiences as fresh as can be. I was at around that very year when we started hearing the wow, wow. I was saying, what is happening? What's happening? So later we started seeing the, the flame, the light. It's not an easy task, so we have to pick this. Me and my friends. So I don't even remember my family. The day that uh, the explosion you know, took place uh, at the Kedia Cantonment, we felt it was at Ogba. We felt it was happening around Ogba because it went far. So much so that some houses had cracks. Just to tell you how terrible. We were running here, there. Uh, until maybe after about an hour before we got to know that uh, the blast was happening at the Keja cantonment. I left here around 5 o'clock and I go to K2. When I reach K2, around 7 o'clock, I start hearing boah, boah. I don't even expect that it's Maryland because I just left from Maryland. So I think that around Lagos Island. But people start running. The people are in Maryland running to Ojota. Ojota people running to Ketu, Ketu, to my 12, my 12 to Korodu. In fact, people are running to um, Sagamu. For Plus TV Africa, Ngozika or HSE. On illegal bunkering, as part of efforts to tackle illegal oil bunkering and soot emission in River State, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, has nabbed and paraded 15 suspected oil thieves. The suspects were arrested by the Commandant General uh, Special Intelligence Corps in collaboration with the NSCDC personnel in the command. Six trucks and a bus used in conveying the legally refined products, particularly kerosene and diesel, were impounded during the arrest. Details in this report. Faces of suspected oil thieves. It has been a major war to read the pipelines of vandals. The Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps paraded the suspects at the command headquarters in Port Harcourt while stating that six trucks and a bus loaded with suspected illegally refined diesel have been seized. A total of six trucks and a bus laden with suspected illegally refined AGO, popularly known as diesel, were also arrested. Two out of the six trucks that we are arrested, we are handed over to the command by Honorable Chile Lloyd, the executive chairman of MOHA, local government area, for investigation and possible prosecution. Oguntu Ashe said the suspects will be charged to court after the conclusion of interrogation and investigation. Even though the anti-vandal, the anti-vandal, Disband, it must be disbanded. 
yet the fight against oil thieves has not stopped. And uh, what you are seeing here is as a result of the arrest made by the city's special intelligence board. This fight is on and continue and will not stop until the issue that has to do with irregularities and shady deals in the oil sector, as far as this state is concerned, is brought to a halt. NSCDC encouraged residents to give prompt information to the command on site of suspicious moves along the pipelines. It's now time for a short break. We'll be right back with more.